Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. Let's duplicate some tabs so we can put our financial reports in them. Right click in the tab up top. We're going to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle as the right is thinking. Going down to the reports on the left hand side, we want to open up one of the favorites, that being the balance sheet. And then we're going to tab to the right, and then we're going down to the reports on the left hand side, this time the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Closing up the hamburger, scrolling up, changing that range from 010124 tab, 123124 tab, and running it. That's January to December 2024. Let's go to the tab to the left. Scroll up to the top, close up the hamburger, and change that range from 010124 tap 123124. And we will run that one as well to refresh it. Let's go to the tab to the left. We've been working on our receipts. Let's find those receipts on the left hand banking side. We're on the receipts all the way then to the right. Now, in prior presentations, we thought about how to get the receipts uploaded. We made some mock receipts to upload into the system which we now have down below in the for review area we added some receipts and we first thought about those receipts that we could add and match to the uh, items that are coming through the bank feeds as it clears our checking account however we might have situations we, which we want to touch in on now where the receipt isn't going to tie in exactly to the bank fee transaction uh, as it goes through the bank feed, possibly we're going to be using the receipt in order to create a transaction in order to tell us what the transaction would be. So, for example, if we had a contractor or an employee that had some expenses and we said we're going to reimburse you for whatever expenses uh, you have, give us the receipts, we will then reimburse you. Well, then when we get the receipts, that's going to be the indication for us to then create the transaction it's not going to be the something that's going to come through the bank feeds for us to automatically match out another example of that would be if for example we have a sole proprietor situation and we are we are out and about and we want to make a purchase that's a business related purchase but we make it with our personal account so we make it with our personal credit card or with cash it's our personal cash or something like that and then we might want to snap a receipt of the image and pull that into our QuickBooks file. And at that point, I would have to use that receipt in order to record the expenses. So I have it in there for taxes uh, and everything. So I didn't pay it with the business account. So it's not going to go through the bank feeds on the business side. But I, I need to pull it into my QuickBooks system. That's another thing I can imagine that we would be using the receipts for. So let's go to the, the receipts tab on the right hand side now we'll talk about how to get this information from uh, yourself or possibly from other people like a contractor using the manage forward email and the app later so obviously the app can help us just to upload the information into the system and if we have multiple people like contractors or employees we can use this kind of email address method to do that so we'll get into that later let's now just focus on the idea that we have these receipts in the system and we basically need to record expenses related to these receipts so let's take a look at this this office this depot one again right so we got another receipt that we we uploaded in a prior presentation here's an image of the receipt now, instead of uploading it as a receipt, which would basically, if I recorded it on this side, would make like an expense form, which we would then, you would expect match to something that clears the bank account, we can use the receipt to make a bill. So we could say, there's our receipt. I want to make a, a bill out of it. And the bill is a form that increases accounts payable. And the other side goes to whatever account, like an expense account that that we're going to be putting in in order for uh, in order to have a reimbursement so the bill adds an extra step however because it goes into accounts payable so we got to make sure that we enter the bill and then we use the bill to write the check or to make to enter the expense form that we're to make the actual payment whatever we're going to do at that point 
So let's say, for example, we're, we're paying, let's make a contractor as our vendor. Let's call them Sam, the contractor that we are paying. So we're going to say, save the contractor payment. And we're, we're going to, we're going to then enter the transaction date. So maybe if this was the receipt and we received the receipt, maybe we review, uh, the, the receipt at some later point. So let's say it was. 03 15 to 4 for example and then this is to reimburse contractor let's say and the due date let's say is 03 20 4 because this is going to enter a bill and this is by the time that we want to pay off the accounts payable and then down here on the uh description it's got the uh depot okay but instead of going to supplies we're going to say this when we actually pay this off we're we're paying off the contractor so we might say contractor contractor so we're paying they're, they're telling us how much it costs or whatever and we're going to pay off the contractor instead of putting it to supplies so i'm going to say let's say contractor expense or something it's going to go into an expense form. It's going to be expenses contractor. So that looks good. I'll just say save that tax field uh, uh, communication. It's a it's a contractor other business here. We'll we'll do that. OK, so that looks good. Now, this is just basically going to make a, a bill form. Now, if I wanted to, to bill a client with it, we can do the same kind of thing we did before. We can make it billable, which means we can pull it into a line item on an invoice if we if we needed to do that. But this would mirror entering a bill. So we'll, let's say save, let's do save and next. And so now it says no matches, create, uh, create a new expense for this receipt. So we are going to create a new expense, although it's not an expense form, it's going to be a bill form. So I'm going to say, all right, create the bill, create the bill. And so that mirrored in essence, what we would do if I hit the plus button up top and basically just made a bill. So we, we would enter a bill looks like this same form as an expense form, except instead of decreasing a checking account or a credit or increasing a credit card account liability, it's going to be decrease. It's going to be increasing a payable a liability so let's see what it looks like if i close this out and i go on over to my balance sheet and run it now we've got in our liabilities this accounts payable so if i go into my accounts payable there's our bill and if i go into that bill that was created from the receipt there's the bill that we created from the receipt i can close that out and go back to my report the other sides on the PL, the profit and loss so now we we didn't put it into supplies this time we put it into you know contractor expense because we're reimbursing the contractor they bought supplies we, we're going to pay the contractor according to whatever deal that we have that's going to be the idea now then of course when we make the transaction we're going to actually have to pay them and so now we can go over here and say we're going to we're going to pay off the contractor, which I could do by saying uh, a plus button up top and enter an, uh, a, a payment form, a bill payment like this, which is in essence a check form and then check off that I'm going to be paying uh, Sam uh, to record the transaction. So here's going to be the payment. This would be decreasing the the uh, the checking account and the other side is going to be decreasing the accounts payable account so it's kind of a two-step process so now you're going to be paying them and if you're paying them out of the checking account you you're gonna you, you could actually print the check here or something like that or you might have an electronic transfer or something like that that you're paying them but now you're doing this accrual step so as you pay them the 20606, however you do it, if it's an electronic transfer or something like that, we can actually record before we do the bank feeds it. In